It started out as a hobby, you know, and, and a typical sort of Kiwi thing, a, a hobby in the shed. We don't want to put anything in there that's addictive or that can harm you. Welcome back to another episode of A Kiwi Original. Today on the show, I'm joined by Heather and Scott Parson from Calm Pipe. This is a company that is the best of the past, that breathes in the new. And as I'm fascinated to talk with them both because of all the options that are shifting with smoking right now. We all know about cigarettes uh, and how vaping is being at least touted as a more healthy option. I'm fascinated to hear from the two of you today about where Calm Pipe fits in and what the product's all about. So first of all, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. So yeah, I guess the first, first question, um, I'll, I'll let you decide who, who to answer this. Um, what's the, the origin story behind Calm Pipe? Like where did the, the actual idea come from um, to, to create this product? Well, it, uh, it stems right back to 2002. Uh, Heather and I had just recently been married and we went over to Colorado, USA to, uh, to live there. And it was the, actually the Heyman bushfire that sort of connected all the, the dots with this idea. Uh, we ended up helping some of the local properties. Uh, the, the, the bushfire was, was a very large uh, out of control fire. And so we helped uh, some families clear a lot of the scrub and bush around their homes to reduce the fuel. And we got a lot of dust and smoke up our nose and in our lungs and kind of led us to think, you know, about the whole act of smoking and just surely there's a better way to help people, you know, have a habit that doesn't, you know, do so much damage to the lungs, that sort of thing. So that's kind of where it, where it was born out of. And uh, over time, we, we sort of developed into more looking at the breathing options as well. So, yeah. So the idea started actually with the, the smoke smoldering in a bushfire and you breathing in that thinking this isn't good. And so there's people out there that are actually purchasing the, the right to enjoy uh, having smoke in their lungs. Uh, I, I know from you know, personal experience going to, um, there's a, there was a show going around Europe that had uh, these plastinated bodies, cadavers, that, and it showed um, the insides of someone. And you could look at the lungs of a smoker versus a non-smoker. Mm. And the lungs were just, they were black and almost um, calcified, like it was, it was rock. Um, so your product's got none of, none of those bad ingredients in it at all. No, nothing. No. That's one of our values is we don't want to put anything in there that's addictive or that can harm you. Um, and, and also you've got to consider the people who are surrounding the person who's smoking. So their families, their, their pets. Um, it doesn't just impact the individual, it impacts everybody, the community around them. So we really wanted to come up with a solution that can you know, hit, this, hit this problem on the head mm -hmm. and, and get something sorted. Yeah, a big one for us was not targeting the lungs with the device that we came up with. And because, you know, that's, they're, they're so delicate, you know, the alveoli in the lungs, the little capillaries, uh, they're not designed for receiving sort of, you know, th those sorts of vapors and, and, and smoke and all those toxins that go with it. Uh, the good news, though, is that if you do stop smoking and, and, and vaping, your lungs can quickly re uh, repair themselves. You know, and so it's, you know, there is hope there for those people that want to, to get away from those habits. Yeah. So is that part of the, the solution that um, with Calm Pipe is to give smokers a way where uh, they can move to something where they've still got something in their hand, uh, but that thing isn't harmful to them, it's enjoyable? Is that the, the main market or is that just one of a number? Probably, um, well, there, there's kind of two markets, but if we're talking about the cessation of the smoking market, um, it probably started with people who were trying to replace that habit. So I think oftentimes when people are quitting smoking, it sounds like after our research that they may quit, but then they may get around their community again and around the smokers and, mm. and, and, and feel like they needed something in their hand. So we were trying mm. to keep that habit the hand-to-mouth habit but not have anything harmful that they're using inside the pipe so yeah that's what we're trying we, we've created it and um we're in the early stages of of launching and releasing it and we're having some great success stories at the beginning yeah looking on your website here there's some really uh, interesting flavor options I'm, I'm looking at menthol mint uh, lavender and chamomile citrus uh, orange cocoa 
Uh, what's each of your favorites, Heather and, and Scott? <laughs> I, I like the citrus one the best, I think, because there's um, the four of them, they have varying strengths. And I don't know, I just, the, the citrus one is really refreshing. And I'm quite a high energy person. Um, so maybe I shouldn't have more high energy put into me, but I, I quite love, I love the citrus. It just, it's, it's um, invigorating for me. Yeah, uh, for me, it'd have to be the, the lavender, chamomile and uh, lemon. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just, you know, lavender can be a bit intense on its own, but when you sort of have that lovely lemon uh, flavor coming through and the, the, the benefits of chamomile as well, it's a, it's a really nice uh, relaxing uh, aroma. But yeah, I am pretty tied between that and the, the cocoa orange is, is pretty good too. Yeah. We, it's interesting because um, we did a, a trial around Christchurch in 2019, so last year, and we had a lot of feedback from different aroma flavors. And we try to take all of their suggestions and have a really considered approach. We work with a, a clinical aromatherapist and she helped us to design a, um, a few more. So that's where our current range has come from, from a lot of that feedback from people from the trial, as well as um, the expertise that she brings to the table. Yeah, and it's it's quite exciting, you know, this whole area that we're, we're getting into, understanding aromas and things. We're relying on a lot of the body of knowledge around aromatherapy that's come from the past, but we're also, we have the opportunity to bring in uh, New Zealand sort of food extracts and things like that as well. So, you know, there's, we're quite excited about the next step in terms of R&D as well and where we can take it. So, yeah, it's good. It sounds like you've done like a lot of research on the, the flavor side of it. Um, on the the pipe part of it, the I mean the only I kind of the only recollection I have of of pipes is my grandfather smoking one, and it was a pretty simple device. And um, I, I, I may not be remembering correctly, but I'd almost say that it was something that he would have made himself. Um, what's different with this? Have you gone down a, a, an R and D approach with how the the pipe is made? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, you know, it's been it started out as a hobby, you know, and, and the typical sort of Kiwi thing, a, a hobby in the shed, uh, and a sort of process of discovery and, you know, a few uh, slightly dodgy early, early prototypes, <laughs> uh, you know, to test the idea. But yeah, essentially, uh, we've gone from what was, you know, the old, the old style pipe that our grandfathers used was, was literally like a little smoking chimney. But uh, we've gone right away from that. We, we don't have to heat our oils. We, uh, the, the device itself was powered through your own breathing. So oh, wow. when you draw, yeah, so when you draw air through the pipe, you drive an air turbine, which basically powers another corresponding turbine in a separate compartment that draws the aroma through into your nose. So so basically, you're breathing fresh air into your lungs, and then having that uh, you know deep satisfying aroma coming up into the nose and, and sensing it there. So. Yeah, the, in terms of the, the technology behind it, uh, we, we've sort of borrowed some technology from uh, using Swiss bearings that come out of uh, watches uh, and very fine, uh, uh, very fine turbines or little fans really. And, and what that allows us to do is create a very efficient uh, breathing device. So you get that nice, as you breathe in, it helps your diaphragm to expand, but you get that, that nice, uh, reaction coming through and uh, it's a little bit of a reward for your breathing to uh, to get that aroma yeah but there's there are a lot of parts to the pipe so um we get them digitally printed actually in uh, in Vicargo, which is really cool and um, there are a lot of other components that we get made across new zealand for the pipe um, but it's been because I don't come from a, a background of a business background or um, I've never done any sourcing in the past. So it's been that's been an experience and a learning for for myself. Um, and I don't know about you. You haven't had heaps of business sourcing experience as well, have you? So no, and, and just even the whole product design uh, journey has been a really interesting one. Uh, you know, heaps of successes and failures along the way, you know, about 20 different marks. <laughs> And fortunately, I teamed up with a, uh, a product designer in Christchurch who has an aeronautical, uh, you know, engineering background. So it was really useful to, to work with someone like that that was able to sort of help test things and, and trial and error. We, we eventually found something we were happy with. Yeah. What has been the, the reaction to when you've gone to some of those uh, suppliers and, and manufacturers and say, 
hey, I've got this great idea. It, it's a pipe, but it's not a pipe the way that you expect. Um, what was the, what was some of the initial reactions you got? Um, it's, it's really hard for me because I come from a primary school teaching background. And so, you know, I'm a really good person. And then I'm trying to sell this original pipe idea to someone to kind of, to get on board. And so I, I go through this whole process of explaining to them what we're trying to do and who we're trying to help and support. And by the time I get to the end of it, they're all on board and they think it's really cool and amazing and how great that we're trying to help people um, in this way. But the initial reaction, we automatically, pretty much every time get lumped into the vaping and tobacco industry category. And it's, it's really sad because that's the exact industry that we're trying to disrupt. Um, but we get put into that category. So we're trying to just spread awareness and, and communicate. And even with our suppliers, we have to do that. And who has been some of the, the early customers that um, have, have picked this up? And are they, are they vaping and smoking and, and shifting across? Or are they starting this from scratch? Or is this something that, you, that they're swapping in and out depending on the, their circumstance, whether they're at work or in the weekend have, have you got any, any um kind of use cases there yeah we do actually we've got some a couple of different cases one was a a a, a, a woman that was a former smoker uh and she tried vaping as well didn't like it uh she's very much sort of net in the natural health area she enjoys aromas and things like that so she was looking for something that she could continue doing uh and you know she she's been really enjoying just having that option, having something different that, that she can keep doing and over time, it's not gonna hurt her. Uh, there's another guy that we worked with, he was kind of in his mid fifties, uh, very much a chain smoker. Uh, and, and he was looking for some, a way to get out of that habit. Uh, and he found that he tried to give up a few times, but he'd be playing golf or something like that. And his mates would be smoking and he'd be like, oh, okay, I'll start again. And it sort of, you know, fold a little bit on, on those sorts of times. So we've had a really good story with him. He's uh, reduced his use of uh, smoking by 90% now, and he's using the pipe and uh, mm -hmm. he's using nicotine lozenges just to, to you know, change his ways. And it's really good. Yeah, yeah we also um, currently we're underway with um, a smoking, a quit smoking trust, so Monarchy Aura Trust, and um, we've hooked up with a cessation expert and he's trialing our pipes with um, some hapu mama, so some pregnant mums who are trying to quit smoking and that's up in Rotorua and um, we're just waiting on that those results, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a process and I think yeah, there, it, it will work for some people and other people, maybe it's not the right thing, but it's just really great having another option, you know, another option for people besides um, just vaping or smoking or um, kind of quitting cold turkey because sometimes that doesn't necessarily work for people. I think what I like about it, although I've never been a, a smoker, is um, what, I, and that's what I like about vaping initially was that it's a healthier option. However, um, vaping just doesn't look cool. And, and I know this is probably against what I should be saying, but you know, when you look on movies, smoking, at least used to look cool. It was a cool thing. Imagine Marlon Brando with a vape machine. It's not cool, right? But you can imagine Marlon Brando with a pipe. And I think what's um, fascinating about what you've done here is not only brought back the pipe, but there's different designs of them. Um, how have the different designs been received? Is that something that, that matters to your customers? Definitely. Yeah, it definitely matters. Um, so we, we're, we're currently underway with lots of different designs and, and we can do that because um, the, the graphics on top of the pipe are actually hydrographically dipped. So it's kind of the same, same way that they use um, different materials on motorbikes. That's how they do our pipes. So it's kind of brought through this film and it, I, I, it's quite a technical process and that's done up in Auckland. Um, and so we have a lot of a lot of scope for different designs, but um, I think people, especially females, have really enjoyed the the new. We kind of in, in house we call it crazy Heather um, Paisley because it's quite you know all over the place, loads of different designs. But then some other people are more into the traditional wood grain pipe. So it's really interesting looking at the market and seeing who responds to which type of design. 
And the, the pipes here I'm looking at, they start at, uh, across the pipes, is $199 for the pipe, and then you pay for the, the pods as you use them. Is that right? Yeah, so you can get um, you can get a subscription and it lowers the price, but each pipe comes with a, a set of pods and, and the pods should last, each pod should last you a few days. So it's actually quite reasonable. It, it's only a few dollars for a pod and that should last you a few days. So once you get the pipe, and we run discounts and things throughout the time. So And we've also just signed up for layby.com so people can do a little affordable mm -hmm. segments to create to improve the access to everyone yeah it's been a big part of it is just to make it accessible to people uh and particularly those that don't have a huge budget as well uh you know the initial cost of the pipe is probably something that you know so we're trying to make it easier for people but if you compare the cost of vaping for a year's use and, and which just can be up to you know can be quite quite high uh and also then look at smoking over a year and compare it back to our 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 product we feel we've got a real uh, advantage there over time people can you know save a lot of money uh, and feel better for it as well yeah those are two really good attributes you're getting people away from the harmful substance of nicotine giving them an opportunity to still uh, experience that habit that hand-to-mouth or going out with the same group of people whether it's outside the office building or uh, in the weekend <laughs> Um, without the, the harmful side of it and have something that's a bit fun. You know, the designs are, are fun. Uh, the flavors here look great. Um, so yeah, well done for you to, for, for coming up with this concept. Is the primary market New Zealand or can you see this, are you getting customers from uh, international? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, our current business model is to focus on New Zealand and uh, just just for a bunch of reasons, it's it's much easier for us to start there. Uh, we kind of would describe ourselves as, as you know, startups are a little bit like, you know, they talk about the runway. Well, we're sort of taxiing down the runway at the moment. <laughs> so uh, we've got a great advisory board. We're really fortunate to have three really uh, clever people working with us. And they're basically saying, you know, look, focus on New Zealand, establish yourself there first, and then we're going to look to sort of jump across to Australia and then eventually the two biggest vaping markets in the world, the US and the UK. So so that's the, the plan is to go global eventually. But yeah, one step at a time. Yeah, It's a good pace to do it at. There's a, a book that I always refer to called Crossing the Chasm, and it talks about very early on in a business, it's better to become a monopoly in a tiny market than it is to spread yourself too thin. And, and I give this advice to New Zealand license holders all the time is, you know, what's the minimum viable audience that you could become the monopoly in? And then once you've done that, they become your default evangelists, your salespeople, and that reduces your marketing costs. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, when you're further down the line, who that ends up being or, or what uh, area that is or what type of particular use case that becomes. Yeah, mm. well, we, I mean, it, it's really interesting though, because with the market, um, we have noticed there are some people who don't vape and smoke. However, they're quite anxious people. So maybe they mm. might um, want to use this product for just mindfulness and um, focusing on deep breathing. Mm. So that's an, another market that we're trying to look into and see, because I know I'm, I'm usually a pretty calm person, but sometimes I do pick up um, the pipe throughout the day um, and just just kind of just focus on my breathing and, and that really helps me. So I, yeah, yeah, it's another it's option been, for people. It, so as we designed the pipe originally, it was thinking very much around enjoyment of the aromas and simulating that sort of that smoking behavior. But what we've uh, discovered as we've gone along is that the, the act of diaphragm breathing is, is hugely beneficial to helping you stay calm. It's kind of the the opposite of the fight flight uh, instinct that we have, and uh, you know if you uh, in a stressful situation you tend to chest breathe, you shallow breathe, and you know there's some good research overseas which actually recommends people breathe through a straw to help them strengthen their diaphragm, and essentially that's kind of what you're doing with the pipe as well. So we've as we've gone along and we've looked at this, we've we've seen there's a real benefit there for people to you know, help their parasympathetic nervous system uh, and to, 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 to remain calm through, through using the pipe. It's a, it's a really good physical cue. It's because there isn't any big cloud of vape or anything like that, or aromas pouring out of it, um, you can use it anywhere. I mean, it's, it's like 
walking into a coffee shop. So I've used mine at a cafe um, and the movie, movie yeah, theater um, at a bar. It out. Um, so that's, it, that's really interesting. And again, it's a lot of awareness. So you have a conversation maybe with the owners or the mm. people there. And once they understand and you show them inside, they think, oh, that's brilliant. Have fun, you know, enjoy. So, um, yeah, it, it, and there's no, I think because of airplanes, there aren't any heating coils or batteries. So we're just looking at that market as well, thinking, well, what, what would be the harm in using it since it's powered by your own breathing? It yeah. should be fine. So that's another option we're looking into later on. I think that it's really interesting how you talked about the, the anxiety part of it. Um, certainly some of the research is coming out uh, in a COVID-19 world is that uh, nations that are locked down are increasingly having uh, people that are more anxious for what they believe is no reason but of course there's a reason there's this you know existential threat that's out there and and maybe that's an opportunity for someone that uh, maybe chews a pen or, or does other behaviors uh, to reduce their anxiety that maybe are negative that this could be a positive that just breaks that cycle and they go outside for a couple of minutes and uh, use the calm pipe instead yeah. yeah absolutely it's, it is breaking some of those i, I guess comfort related habits and it may be food, it may be, you know, some people uh, maybe turn to alcohol and they want to, to reduce that and, and give themselves an option. Um, for me, you know, there's a lot of talk around mindfulness and meditation, but I find it when I'm in the thick of it, you know, in a busy work situation, you know, it's kind of hard to remember to do that mm. at, at that moment. And so the benefit of having the, the pipe there is that you can actually just grab it and, and use it and uh, without having to think about it too much. So, so that really helps. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a good nudge, like a visual uh, nudge to do something we should all be doing anyway, is that deep breathing and that relaxation every so often. Because there's a ton of research around, I think it's the uh, para, I can't say it, parasympathetic it's nervous so system. Because yeah. yes. uh, <laughs> I've felt it myself, you do 10 long breaths and then your body almost, that's a, a sign for your body to go, you can chill out. Um, yeah. 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 Well, it's amazing how much, you know, the lizard brain sometimes kicks in with the, you know, running away from the saber-toothed tiger. And, uh, you know, one good thing about uh, working with essential oils is that the that taps into a really old part of our brain. It goes, your smell goes through the limbic system directly into the brain. And we've got th over 350 neuro pathways into the brain. And that's all from that ev early evolution when we must have been a lot more reliant on, on smell. So the science is quite fascinating around how, you know, using different aromas invokes either smell memory or it can actually, with very small amounts of, of essential oils, basically, it, uh, it, it can change your mood and, and behavior in a positive way. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, I've really enjoyed having you as a, a guest on today and, and certainly the NZ Made audience. Um, this is a great type of thing for them to be able to hear and see through the show. Um, is there anything I haven't asked either of you uh, that uh, you want to cover off? Good question. Yeah, I, I guess it's really around how do we get it out there and let people know about it. And, you know, the likes of this interview is, 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 is helping us in doing that. And that's probably the, the biggest challenge we've got ahead of us. As, as we talked about earlier in the interview, it's it's uh, any new invention uh, tends to get ridiculed or challenged mm -hmm. early on. Uh, the guys from Spring Free Trampoline actually told me this. And they said, oh, early on, it's going to be tough. He said, eventually it'll get known and then it'll be taken as a given. But in between times, we've got a, a big job to build awareness and let people know exactly what this pipe is about. It's not about vaping or smoking. Uh, it's not about making you addicted to something that superheats you know, chemicals and sends them into your lungs. This is about yeah something you can do and keep doing once you've given up smoking or vaping yeah i think um ed yeah go for it Heather. no that's no, okay i'm just i'm just gonna say yeah <laughs> <laughs> at your stage of, of business and the one thing that just crossed my mind there um is is looking for the reasons from those very early on buyers about why they buy and a lot of people uh like to follow what others do and then there's a group of people that like to shift away from what others do. And if you can find the particular behaviors of people that are shifting away from something else. So 
um, what's the product you're replacing? And th there might be someone out there within vaping that always wants the new, new flavor, but actually that's not what they want. They want to tell their friends that I'm at the leading edge of whatever's happening. And if your product helps them define themselves as different from the crowd, then that person becomes your champion. And when there's enough of them who are now on calm pipe, the ones who like to follow and not be first, look to those friends and say, oh, that's what we do now. That's how craft beer worked, is that they yeah, yeah. never were they going to take on um, the big breweries, right? But if they could mm -hmm. get a small enough group that identified with this different way of brewing, and they had lots of other identifiers with them. You know, there was a, a long beard, or there was a man bun, or there was particular <laughs> places they went. There, there was a whole lifestyle around it. So it's, it's thinking about your product in terms of it more holistically. What are the films that those people go and see? What's the music they listen to? Who do they identify with being? Uh, and there may be different sets of that for different markets, uh, but that can kind of then help you go beyond just the, the features and benefits of the product itself. Yeah, that's excellent. So we can book another appointment to talk to you more, can't we, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I love giving the advice out, particularly at this stage. We need more uh, business owners in New Zealand who take this risk and this opportunity on board to do things differently. And, and certainly anything that's contributing to New Zealand's future like this is a great thing. So I appreciate uh, both of your time today and uh, good luck on your journey with Kampai. Thanks. Right. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome.